Welcome back to the channel, you guys. This is your girl, Wicked Raider 22, coming to you from one of my free to play accounts. And this is a champion that I recently pulled. The first, it was actually the first legendary on this particular account. Because, of course, they're still doing the login um, special with Ultimate Death Knight, which this guy by himself is an amazing amazing um, account changer. So for everyone that is just now logging in, you can tell by the number of reviews, um, especially if you have gotten him early game because he just recently came out a couple of weeks ago. It's been amazing to work through him. I can definitely say that most of you guys are going to notice he's changed the way arena looks, especially early arena. But I am all about snick tracks i guess snick tracks we're gonna go with the spelling may be a little rough but when i pull this guy i'm looking like okay it's not many skinwalkers that i have pulled um honestly on other accounts that i've kept very long some of them have pretty good utility but the first thing i noticed base hp is sitting at twelve thousand. base attack is 451 684 on the defense so not looking bad I was kind of liking the fact that his speed is 99, so he's not the slowest um, champion by far. But it was my first time pulling him on any of my accounts. So not too many reviews, but when you log in and it's green means go. And I mean, this guy is a go all the way. The biggest limitation, of course, for all of my newbies, for all of my lower level gamers, um, if you are early game, it's always going to be artifacts. So you can definitely tell I am still rolling through on this particular account, just trying to get good artifacts. Um, reaching that milestone of opening the forge is definitely going to change your account. But let's look at his skill kit. I've had a chance to run him through a couple of battles, been really impressed with it, but I'm really looking forward to the potential of placing Snick Track and, um, you know, of course, Ultimate Death Knight on the same team as I am, of course, powering up my Galek. So that seems like a powerhouse, a good support in there, and we're probably going to make a little magic. So on this first skill, you have Misery Morningstar. He attacks one enemy and has a 50% chance of placing a 50% decrease attack debuff for two turns. Um, early game especially, this is going to make him really important as you are trying to progress in dungeons. This is going to make those areas in the keep a lot easier to deal with, I mean, as well. You're thinking about those bosses that are able to heal themselves right after delivering a huge attack. Um, the other thing I thought about is areas like Ice Golem is one in particular. There are a couple of areas in Dragon's Lair that I struggle with more on my free-to-play account than on my pay-to-play, of course. Now, if the target is under a leech debuff, has a 100% chance of placing a 50% decrease attack debuff on the target for two turns before attacking. So if you have, for example, a Countess Lick, if you have Deliana on your team, um, I've got a couple of leech players, um, that are just kind of rushing through my mind. It definitely creeps us up because that 100% chance of a decrease, you know, attack is, is golden. You just can't beat it. His damage is based on his HP, but because his base level, especially early game is, is a lot higher than most of your champions doesn't really make that much of a difference. And he doesn't take that many books, at least on this first skill. Now, Cloing Hora, and this can be placed on a three-turn cooldown, attacks all enemies. I'm already smiling. I am already smiling. Has a 75% chance of placing a 30% decreased speed debuff for two turns. So we are decreasing your attack. We are decreasing the speed. Guys, this says control all the way. Like, I mean, they toss in a turn meter and this dude will just be on it. Also places a shield buff on all allies, equal to 30% of this champion's max HP for two turns. That's the encouragement for you to definitely use his artifacts to build his HP. The shield buff cannot be removed if it is placed when there are any enemies under leech debuffs. So Snick Tracks is going to benefit from who he is being placed on the team with. 
Berman Vita. All right, places a 50% ally protection buff on all allies except this champion for two turns. If you have another champion, um, Shaman is one that comes to mind. Um, I'm trying to think. There's another champion I really like, but they are extremely squishy, extremely squishy. Um, this is a good way for you to provide a little bit extra protection. Also places a 30% reflect damage buff on all allies for two turns. Do not sleep on reflect damage. There are a lot of veteran creators that have talked about it. I, for one, um, have only recently started paying attention to it. And to be honest, guys, it's not until I made it to Doom Tower that I really started valuing some of the buffs and the debuffs that were involved, um, especially when it comes to things like ally protection. But reflect damage is another one. Um, just working through the levels that you start paying attention to. Even after he places that 30% reflect damage buff on all allies for two turns, he then heals himself by 50% of their max HP. He heals himself by 50% of everybody else's max HP. You are continuously not only keeping him alive, but allowing him to fully support your other champions. And this can be placed on a three-turn cooldown. So you're looking overall for books. You have four, eight, 10 books, 10, 10 books. Guys, I have some epic champions that need 15 to 17 books. Like it's ridiculous. This overall is not bad. The passive just solidifies it. The passive is soul rot. Whenever an ally under a reflect damage buff is attacked, places a leech debuff on the attacker for one turn reflects 50% of the damage this champion receives back to the attacker, increases the amount of damage reflected by 20% from reflect damage buffs placed by allies. He is literally going in and taking the buffs, the work of other champions on your team and creating a huge advantage for all of your team members. Now, if some of this is like, okay, you know, you know, nice. I want you to kind of pace yourself until you hit probably mid to late early game. This guy can come in and is going to do a lot of assisting as far as towers are going, as you're making it through brutal and nightmare for those of us who are still on campaign, as you start to work through keeps and you're making it above level 15, this is one of those champions. Um, you guys will notice one of the first thing I start doing with my top main champions is I throw in masteries. It's, it's one of the biggest ways to impact your champion overall. He does have an aura, so increases ally HP in all battles by 33%. Nicely solid. And if you are still into doing blessings, um, he's actually one of those where oh, there are a couple of blessings that I could kind of see putting on him based on who the champion is next to. Guys, 100% of this game is always going to come down to what other champions you're able to use on your particular account. Um, for this guy, if we run him really quickly, and I am mm, early, early campaign, and I think that's why I got so excited when I pulled him, because I'm still on normal, like I'm just making it to, you know, stage six in this thing, level six, so it's it's been pretty nice, but if I toss him on a team, let's just say I toss him with my favorite little classic team, we're going to go in and kind of see what he does and, you know, if he's even used, because sometimes you have champions that are doing quite a bit. I've had Galek on this particular account. I've been working on him. I always work on my sniper. Um, sniper is really easy to number one outfit gear up. You can definitely use dupes to book sniper as well. So guys, if you have sniper, you kept her with your account, do not waste your books because you're going to see number one, she pops in the marketplace pretty often. And number two, the further you go in, she's going to be in those sharp pools as well. So let's just kind of look at overall. So overall, this is with basic gear, not ascended, nothing, just nothing, just straight out. This is where his difference is going to be made. And as you can see, Snick Track and Galek 
can have a back and forth um, kind of appeal when it comes to defense. The other thing I want you guys to think about is after you have ascended Death Knight, after you've ascended Snick Track and Galect, you will notice that their defense potential, um, their the, the protection of HP overall is amazing. So it's these numbers. Everyone isn't going to be your biggest attacker. You're going to end up pulling much better nukers on your team. But this is a guy that I would definitely consider six-starring at this point. Ultimate Death Knight is another one. If you have not six-starred Ultimate Death Knight, make sure you put that on your list of things to do. I always six-star at least one sniper. I have one account where I'm doing two. So it's always something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. There have been some really good legendary pulls. Um, I will be doing a series on just some of the champions I've been really, really impressed with so far. Who did you guys pull? Like since we finished Clan B Clan, have you had any great pulls since they've been doing the event as far as the boosting for your shards? If so, who did you get? How are you using them? And have they made an impact on your accounts? This is going to be a short one, but I just had to share this one because it was so exciting kind of seeing that new graphic and this particular champion coming out for Legendary. I will talk to you guys soon and happy gaming.